Is this thing on? I think it is. Is it on? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to Daddy Jeep Garage. I'm Rob. We got here more junk. I keep bringing it home, but I do need it. I need this transfer case. Uh, ultimately, it's going to turn to my doubler. Transmission was just a package deal. Came with both, so I have another 4L60. That makes three. Um, it's just going to hang out in the corner somewhere. Someday it might get put into service, but immediately we're going to work on this transfer case. We're going to, before we bring it inside, we're going to try to scrape off some of this gunk, get it cleaned up. And then we're going to use it for mock-up for my new uh, transfer case adapter that we'll get into here in a little bit. A big part of this transmission project is to keep my transmission from leaking. I keep leaking between the transmission and transfer case right here at this ceiling surface. I believe I've said it before, but that's where my problem lies. And I've only been using four of the six bolts in the transfer case. So we're going to try to make that go away. Make sure we use all six of these bolts. So in order to do that, I'm going to use this adapter. This is my 4L60E2 uh, NP242, or 241 rather, adapter. We're going to cut this thing up. Now the reason we have to cut this up, this is three and a half inches or so. The output shaft on the Turbo 350 is only, isn't sticking out at all. It's actually recessed behind the surface. So we can't have this big space between the two we have to shorten that up so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this we're going to cut this surface off we're going to cut this surface off and we're going to try to squish it together and weld those two back together i have no idea if it's going to work but we're going to try it so we're going to start cutting this thing up this is an old crappy one it's rusty it's perfect for what we're doing i have two other ones so we're not hurting anything that we don't already have spares of so let's get cutting of grinding to do but this task would be way better off in a milling machine unfortunately i don't have one of those it's on the list one of the things i would love to have so we need to grind this surface down flat with that surface best we can do with a grinder Hand hurts. Fear. <laughs> so we're underneath the Jeep. We're going to try to figure out an angle of where my transfer case currently sits so I can match it up on the bench. So I got this fancy little Klein uh, angle gauge. So I'm going to go over here on the side where these lugs are. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, the magnet's not going to work because it's aluminum, dummy. But uh, we're getting 71.4 degrees on that lug. So we're going to try to match that on the bench. <laughs> so both pieces of my adapters are now on their respective chunks. I got this piece bolted to the transmission, and I've got the other chunk bolted to the transfer case. Now we need to marry the two, see if we can replicate the angle of what's in the Jeep. Seventy-one point four. So this is the current configuration. It's in the Jeep now, the current clocking, and it shows me where my problems are. Same problems I have with my current adapter, I'm going to have with this adapter. This bolt, this bolt are going to interfere. So you can see this, these, this is going to interfere. I could go with a uh, an Allen head bolt here, and I maybe could make it work, 
but I think the smarter decision would be to just reclock my transfer case. And a little little tip for you: if you guys don't have scissor jacks around your shop, you should. They're great for stuff like this. So I can go ahead and I can take my scissor jack, which I have under this side of the transfer case, and run it with my impact, and I can just adjust that angle. Right there, 62 degrees is the number we came up with earlier. So now, so now that we get this set at 62 on this, this side, which is an arbitrary number, again, relative to what it is in the Jeep now, but that positions it so all six of these bolts are now accessible. I can get to every one of them. No special fasteners required. It's, it's, it's the right thing to do. So what are the negatives of clocking it up more? Well, now, I'm gonna, of course, I'm going to have to cut the floor in the Jeep, which isn't a big deal. I've cut my Jeep up once or twice before. We can cut it up again. So um, this part of the case is going to interfere with a cross member, on that support under the floor. And my drive shaft is actually going to hit the floor now underneath the, my feet. So I'm going to have to modify that as well. But no big deal. We can chop that up. I'm just super happy that I can get all six bolts in finally. And then once, once these two pieces are welded together, I'll be able to drill through from the transmission side holes back through the transfer case side of the adapter and then I can counter bore those so the uh, the whole adapter will bolt to the transmission first and then the transfer case will get bolted to it. So here's my concern with the reclocking of this transfer case. So this line here from there down through there was the original level from the fill plug with the proper clocking. Now that I've rotated it up now it's clocked to here. That's a pretty huge difference. So what, what that equals over here is now my fluid level is all the way up here, almost to the center line of the reduction box, where when it was rotated before, it was way down, barely getting to the bottom of the reduction box. So I don't know if that's okay. That's going to put, oh, really, it's going to put a lot more fluid in this thing. So if anybody knows an answer to that, you know, I'm all ears. Um, I think at this point, I'm probably just going to underfill it a little bit to try to keep that level roughly where it's supposed to be. Also consider this is a trail Jeep. I'm not going down the highway at 60 miles an hour. So here you can see where these currently sit. And again, I'm going to machine these flat. So this dimension is going to come down to roughly three quarters of an inch once it's all flat. We pan back to the original, what this thing started as. This distance here is, I think, three and a half inches. So, I mean, it's a huge change in the length of what this is supposed to be. But if you look at the output of a Turbo 350, the, the output shaft only sticks out about a half an inch. Where on the 700R4 or 4L60 that this adapter is supposed to be for, that output sticks out three and a half, four inches. So that's, that's the difference. That's why I can't just use this adapter the way it is. So I've got to build this super short adapter, which for a YJ is great because that gets me more drive shaft length in the rear. So for my new transmission to transfer case adapter, again, we started with one of these 4L60E to 241C adapters. We cut the center out and then TJ took it to work and had it machined flat on both sides. I was going to grind it flat, but this was way easier because somebody else did it for me. So now these two will fit together real nice. They'll have a great weld surface inside. Once it's all lined up, I'll get a great surface to weld to in here. I'll weld out here. They're gonna work out fantastic. And look how thin that is. So we had the two pieces mocked up between the training and the transfer case. I went, and went ahead and got them tacked together. So now we need to heat these. I believe this is cast steel. Just to be safe, I wanna heat them up so I get good penetration. We're gonna wrap it up, cool it slowly. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up in some foil to keep it clean. I'm gonna throw it right in the wood stove. Need to get it up to 400 degrees or so. It should definitely do that in here. All right, let's 
check this thing again. I bet it's getting pretty toasty. It's discolored, so I think we're getting somewhere. Yeah, we're at 440. That ought to do. All right, now that everything is good and heated up, we're going to go ahead and burn this thing in. Some pretty decent looking welds in there. It's really nice when you preheat and get good penetration. Makes some nice welds. Holy. Is it toasty? Uh, eight something? Yeah, I put some heat in that. I think you can put it in the oven to cool. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna wrap this thing up and let it cool. Just like a baby, right? Is it hot? The bench was hot, yeah. <laughs> now that I have the two pieces glued together, now we have to transfer these holes. So these holes here, these four, are the ones that go into the transmission. So we're going to drill these out. We've just got the closest bit I can find. It's a slight little bit loose, but I think it'll be okay. I'm going to drill those holes through this plate. And it's going to end up in bad places in here, I'm sure. But we're going to do our best to countersink these holes. So the bolt heads sit flush so we can bolt this whole adapter up to the transmission and then go ahead and bolt to the transfer case with those six holes. we've got our adapter modified I went ahead and ground everything down cleaned it up put some paint on it now we're gonna go ahead and get this installed on the transmission put a new seal on here so here you can see all my bolts countersunk nicely everything is below the surface but I put a little bit of sealer on there new new gasket and that will seal up really nice I'm excited to have no more transmission leaks so this is the adapter that I'm replacing. So this is a modified NP208, I think, or 203, one of those. I think it's a 208. But with this one, I can only get one, two, three, and four bolts into the transfer case. So I, I really think that's a big part of why I wasn't sealing well. So we'll see. Hopefully this new one with uh, getting all six bolts in place is going to help out and stop my leak. So as it turns out, this surface in here has to clear the front of the pump on the transfer case. And I had it all full of welds, so I just spent about 40 minutes grinding all of that off so I can get that to sit flush like it's supposed to. Kind of a pain. I'm sure it weakened it some. Um, I know I had good penetration on my weld, so hopefully uh, it doesn't weaken it to the point where it's a problem. But this is where we're at. A bunch of grinding. Now we can get the transfer case in. The transfer case is installed. The new adapter is good. I've got actually all six bolts in there with a gasket and some high torque RTV, which is gooing out all over the place, but that's all right. I do not want this to leak. I hope, uh, hope this new adapter solves my problem. So with the new adapter, we also adjusted the clocking of the transfer case, and it is just about flat now. I did do some clearancing up in here. I cut this cross member out, give this some room to move up some more. So once we get it back on the mount, 
make sure that's going to be enough clearance. I sure hope so, because I glued that thing in, so it better be.